Hi, my name is Michael White, mix engineer and founder of the MPG Music Production School. In this video, we will take a look at the Waves Abbey Road Reverb Plates plugin. In 1957, Abbey Road Studios purchased four plate reverb units designed in Germany. These were the first professional electromechanical reverb units made available worldwide. The graphic representation shown in the upper portion of the plugin window represents a physical device that is 8 feet long, 4 feet tall, and 1 foot wide. Each unit contains a thin steel plate suspended by springs within a metal frame. A small moving coil transducer was fixed to the plate center to convert the incoming audio into plate vibrations. The two pickups at either end converted the vibrations back into an audio signal. To control the sustain of the vibrations, a thin rigid fiberglass panel was placed parallel to the plate with an adjustable distance of one eighth of an inch to two inches. A remote control device was used to make these adjustments in the control room to set the reverb decay time. The four plates labeled A, B, C, and D in Abbey Road Studios are still operational and have been meticulously modeled here in this plugin. So let's start with a quick overview of the features and get straight into some audio examples. To start off with, the plugin itself can be instantiated as a mono in, mono out, mono in, stereo out, or stereo in, stereo out, as you see here. Everything pretty much starts with the input and output level controls. The left right adjustment can be linked or separated. The plate selector allows you to select which plate that you want to use of the uh, four uh, possibilities. The damper control allows you to control the reverb time. The crosstalk control sets the summing of the left and right input. The treble control is a 4 kHz shelf that allows for a plus minus 20 dB. The bass cut emulates the three high pass filter settings of the original EMT hardware. The pre delay sets the amount of delay time before the onset of reverb. The driver control models the total harmonic distortion behavior of the driver amp, pickup amp, and the plate itself. The wet dry control is used if you're placing the plug-in across the insert of an audio track. And the analog control at a setting of 100 allows you to uh, add in the modeled hum and noise inherent in the original unit. So let's get straight into some audio examples. And I want to start by taking a look at the plate selection. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, solo up the lead vocal here. And uh, what we'll do is we'll take a, a quick listen to uh, some audio here. And I'll just take the plate in and out for a second, just so you can get an idea of what the basic uh, sound that I have set up here for this particular setting. Baby, it's time for you to sleep. Count my freckles like you're counting sheep. So as you can hear, obviously, of uh, the wet-dry difference, you could hear the uh, the depth and, and breadth of the plug-in just straight away. Now, I want to do in this next example, just toggle through quickly the different plate selections just to, to give you an idea of how I set up the sound and also to talk a little bit more about the character of the individual plates and, and how to actually work the plug-in itself. Baby, it's time for you to sleep Count my freckles like you're counting sheep I will sing you a sweet melody Bring you closer to the deep I like your style Won't you stay a while There's no hiding place, child For what you feel inside Oh, I'll take my time. So as you can hear, each plate has a unique tonal character to it, and this is very much true to the original. You'll also notice that the reverb time changes from one plate selection to, the, uh, to another, which is also true of the original. So if you had any two plates or three plates, or in this case four plates, in any setup, just uh, using the damper control to set a particular second value is not necessarily going to yield the same results on every individual plate. 
Uh, some of this is controlled by calibration. Uh, some of it is just inherent into the unique nature and sound of the individual plates and quite often not messed with if it sounds great. Um, the damper control here is a little bit different than what you would find on the original unit in that you have 11 steps in the process where you go here from zero all the way up to 10, giving you a maximum reverb time. So you will find as you go through different plate selections, once you find the basic tonal character, it's a good idea then to adjust the reverb time according to the sound or character that you want to get. So just to give you a, a basic idea of this, just the range of it, what I'll do is I'll play a little bit of audio and step my way through some of the reverb time settings. So I can do this two ways. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it down here to zero and then I'm going to click in steps and just go upward just so you can get a sense of how short and immediate it can sound as well as, as um, long and rich. Baby, it's time for you to sleep. Count my freckles like you're counting sheep I will sing you a sweet melody Bring you closer to the deep I like your style, won't you stay a while there's no harder place, child, for what you feel inside. Oh, I'll take my time as I sing to you this bedside lullaby, lullaby, lullaby. So you can hear like the range and depth of the sound that's available here. Now once you set or come across a reverb time that you like, the next basic controls here that you would work with would be the treble and, and the bass cut. So the, the treble control is simply just a 4K shelf uh, allowing for a plus minus control. And as you'll see here in some of the audio examples, this can actually be used to help and enhance uh, some of the sonic characters. So for example here, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the acoustic guitar setting and uh, just very quickly I'm going to switch this back to my default setting here just so we're back where we started and um, and so now here what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some adjustments here and so for this one for the acoustic guitar I selected plate C had like the best character and we could toggle through a few different things um, but you'll notice here what I have said is no bass cut because the original sound was basically a DI. You could hear a little bit of the acoustic bleeding into the microphone and I had a DI. So basically what I tried to do was um, pull the sound together as best that I could and then take that and I wanted to use this reverb unit on top of that to help warm up the sound. So I left no bass cut so this, this discludes any high pass uh, filtering. Um, from the original electronics. So let's take a listen to the acoustic guitar. So what you have here is relatively a shorter reverb overall, um, but what I've done is that by opening up that bass cut, it actually allows more of the low end reverberant energy, which may be a little bit boomy and uh, some other types of sounds to kind of ring through and add a little bit of body in. Additionally, uh, what I could also do here is to kind of pull back on some of the treble. So let's listen to a little bit of that and I'll make some adjustments with the bass cut and treble and see if we can kind of tune and warm this reverb up a little bit better for the acoustic. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So what you can hear in this is uh, that, you know, depending upon the song and the original sound, just with those adjustments there, those simple adjustments, you pretty much, you have a pretty broad range of control over the tonal character and essentially where the reverb uh, decay is coming from. Plates can be very bright, but they can also be very warm. And having this adjustment in addition to the tonal character that's added in here is really, is very helpful. Another very helpful control here uh, with this that I want to just show very quickly here is the setting of the pre-delay. Now, the pre-delay setting allows you to adjust the uh, amount of time before the onset of reverb, essentially. So it's separating the dry signal from the reverberant signal. And what this can do if you set no pre-delay, so there's a touch of pre-delay here. I believe I have 10 milliseconds of pre-delay. If I have no pre-delay, then what will happen is the reverb will sort of attach right to the back of the dry signal. And if I start to blow out or pull out some pre-delay there and set or set a pre-delay in between there, what I can do is I can create some depth and distance in the reverb. So I'm just going to go through a couple of different settings because with the acoustic guitar, it actually makes um, it makes a, an interesting a perspective difference in terms of the way the guitar appears in the mix. So let's check that out. So what you can uh, see there, as I kind of step through some different settings, um, was that you can hear the tonal character shift in, as well as the distance and perspective of this. Now, generally, this is something that I would set in the context of working with, you know, in the context of the rest of the mix and where everything else is, sat, is sitting in the rest of the mix. So I set this um, as a setting uh, to 10 milliseconds. I can also use this, um, which is also an interesting control, the drive control. And if we wanted to add a little bit of grit into the sound, and sometimes this can add a little bit of a growl or a warmth into the sound, then the drive control is a way of distorting that signal going into the to the plate driver. So the plate electronics and going into the driver mechanism itself that attaches to the plate. So let's uh, check a little bit of that out. So as you can see, that adds another layer of tonal control in that, you know, with the right type of sound and right situation, um, that actually can be a very valuable tool. Obviously for, for this song, um, more of a ballad, it is probably not necessarily appropriate for this song, but you get the basic idea of it. I want to show a couple of other audio examples here. Um, one is something that uh, I did here um, with the, I'm going to switch this back to the original here for a second. Um, uh, two different things here. One is a pad, and um, I want to show you something that I did here with with the pad, which is uh, it, which can also um, help me to explain a little bit about how the crosstalk control works and how to set it. So what I've done with this original pad is I've spread it wide with an S1 imager, and uh, so I want the reverb now to kind of take on and add some depth in the background. So I'm going to start by playing this and taking it in and out just so you can hear the difference of what the original pad sound is 
versus what the uh, the reverb on the plate. And then I'll explain some of the settings and how I ended up getting there. So you can see here I have uh, quite a long reverb time on this with plate D. Now, when I have it set up like this, a couple of things that I did was I warmed up the top end, so I rolled off a little bit on the top end, but I also filtered the low end, and that helps the reverb to have a little bit more distance, whereas a more full frequency signal is going to make the reverb pull a little bit forward. So with the, with the original pad sort of spread outside the speakers a bit, then uh, going in, with no crosstalk, what happens is the left signal spread very wide feeds only to the plate, uh, the left plate engine, and the right side feeds only into the right plate engine. And you do get reverb in between, but there's no cross correlation or crosstalk between the two. So what ends up happening is that is something that actually is really unique from the original plates, which were primarily mono in with a stereo out because you had a single speaker driver. And in order to create a stereo reverb, a true stereo in, stereo out reverb, and I've done this in studio, it's very difficult to set up because of the tonal variations of the different plates, would be to have two sends feeding into two separate EMT plates and bringing back the returns of the reverb uh, left and right. And you, because they return stereo, you can make them sort of start at the center uh, uh, as a width and go all the way to uh, return on the far left and far right. And then you would get a little bit more of a discrete reverb that's closer to what we're setting up here. So the crosstalk control allows the reverb to sort of be merged from the input signals. Now, this, this is maybe not the best example because what actually happens here, because I've spread it out and there's a little bit of phase cancellation, the reverb actually starts to disappear as it starts to mono up. But I'll, I'll play that for you uh, just for an example in a second. The other part that, aside from the roll-offs here with the low end and the top end, is the pre-delay. So I set a pre-delay here about 150 milliseconds. And what that does is it helps to set off a little bit of distance from the dry signal that adds that depth and spread. A little bit of drive there to add some grit. And uh, so let's let's take a listen uh, again. And now I'm going to play with the crosstalk control just to kind of show you what that's all about. So what you should notice there is how the, the reverb just starts to spread out. And that's, I think, part of what makes this so cool and, and really very open sounding. It helps on so many levels having that spread. And it also gives you the ability to kind of go anywhere in between, which is, is gives you a flexibility that's not normally part of, of a, a, a real plate plugin or a real plate uh, unit itself. So um, let's see what I've done here. Go back there. Okay, so, and then one uh, final example here that I want to show you, and then we'll, we'll do an overall listen to some of the songs since you've kind of heard it in little bits, is I'm going to fast forward here to the outro section. And what we have here is a little, um, a group of bass and cellos um, that has uh, been programmed in. And what I wanted to get here was some depth and richness, and I stumbled across something that was actually very interesting, which is sort of a plate resonance. And what you'll find is that sometimes certain input signals will resonate the plates in different ways. It probably has something to do with the different frequencies, resonant frequencies of the instrument as they match up with the plate. And essentially what ends up happening is you can add a tonal character 
that really is not part of the original. And so I'm going to play with this and just go through some variations because I want to show you uh, a couple of what the different plate um, settings sound like just so you could see how I landed on that character and then uh, show you how that makes such an interesting, uh, unique sound for this particular setup. So let's listen to it uh, straight up as I have it. So what, if you noticed it and you paid attention to what was going on, there was some mid-range resonant frequencies, which were kind of cool, um, that added a bit of character. Now, that is not true with every plate. So I just want to step now through some of the individual selections just to show you how that tonal variation can be made um, more natural sounding or more aggressive sounding like you hear in this example. So what you see there in that example, how all those four different plates all have a very unique sound. Again, just like the pad, I added in a, a good amount of pre-delay to help create some separation and some depth to kind of bring in some of the warmth and uh, body and character of the sound. So now let's have a listen to the whole song, and it will A-B the reverb plates in and out so you can get a sense of how all this works together with all the different settings. The only effect used in this entire mix is the Abbey Road Plates Reverb plugin. As the song progresses, I will show the different plate settings and also show the two graphic modes that are influenced by the reverb transients. You can change them by clicking on the driver in the center of the plate graphic. So let me just uh, scroll this over here a little bit so we can queue up uh, the first setting here. I'm going to call up the uh, plate for the acoustic guitar because that begins the song. And uh, let's have a listen. Maybe it's time to say goodnight. So close your eyes. Just stay a while. There's 
There's no hiding place, child, for what you feel inside. Oh, I take my time as I sing to you this bedside lullaby, lullaby, lullaby. You say goodbye, my love. No, I will catch you as you fall. I will catch you as you fall. I will catch you. I will catch you as you fall. As I, I think you can hear from, from these audio demonstrations and just the quality and richness and the depth that comes from working with these reverbs, um, it's just incredible. Um, this one has uh, really uh, blown me away and very quickly become uh, my favorite go-to reverb. And uh, to me, the most pure emulation of plates that I've heard, especially the resonances and how clear they are and the tails and the way that they are, are, are perfectly tailored. It's just so true to all the uh, sessions, the many sessions that I've done using plates. They're all a little different, as I say, but there's a character there and a richness that has obviously come through very clearly in this. So uh, first of all, I'd like to thank, um, or to wrap it up, I'd like to thank uh, the artist Bridget Barkin uh, for providing this song. Uh, the song is called Bedside Lullaby, uh, produced by Patrick Pellisse. Uh, and uh, you can reach Patrick or Bridget uh, by sending an email to Codastar, C-O-D-A-S-T-A-R, at gmail.com. That's Codastar at gmail.com. My name is Michael White of the MPG Music Production School. Uh, I can be reached at uh, mpginsider.com if you go to that website. That's my website uh, for my school and all the work that I do. And uh, you can hit the contact form there and reach me that way. Thank you very much for watching and for tuning in uh, for this video on uh, the Waves Abbey Road Reverb Plates plugin. <laughs>